Man, you go through more phones than an old, rich, white dude in hookers. The last one I had lasted me uh, two or three years. But, yeah, yeah, I was going through a lot of those flip phones there for a minute. Oh, man, so many flip phones. (laughs) This one I just sanitized too much all the time, I think. I stopped sanitizing, and I went with alcohol swabs, and I think that works better. Wait, you sanitize your own phone? All the time. You don't even go oh, anywhere. I do that. I did that before COVID. Oh my gosh, you're the weirdest boy. Yeah, well, look up how much germs are all over your phone. Oh, maybe your phone. You look like a grubby slug. So, <laughs> no, phones and remotes have tons of germs on them. Well, that's because you got a thumb up your butthole all the time, and then you go and touch <laughs> your your phone. So. It's in general, Randall. Yeah, in general, you have a thumb up your butthole at all times. (laughs) It's disgusting. I know it is. Stop doing it, dude. Yeah. You have the weirdest thoughts about me. No, I just know you. (laughs) I don't have to ponder it. I just know. Oh, no. It uh, took a lot for the guy to get the the camera up my butthole the one time. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Please explain exactly that statement. Said. What's that? What sort of pornography were you filming? What is th- no. what? One more time? No. What are you doing? It's a, it's a medical procedure. God. <laughs> you, you you could probably post that on some website and make some money off it. Oh well, I don't have the video. No, I, I, you have a right to it, I'm sure. It's your butthole. <laughs> Medical stuff. Yeah, geez. Are you okay? I think so. Okay. Well. Are I, you? Yeah, I've never had a camera up my butthole. That's why I was asking. I'm worried <laughs> now. I didn't know this oh, happened. This is years ago. <laughs> Jesus. You're always, you're always sprouting all these weird growths all over your body, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah you're like the want... other day i i popped a i thought it was a zit and a fucking nail came out <laughs> dude i did have a fucking did i tell you about the uh goddamn boil that was on my arm that thing was like almost the size of a fucking softball <laughs> you're so gross oh it was disgusting oh man it was, you know, it was probably, it was actually like two golf balls. It was really gross. Isn't that an oxymoron when you're talking about a boil? Can, can What? Oh, it's disgusting. Well, obviously. <laughs> it's it's yeah, never yeah, been cute. It was, it was crazy, man. No, they, were, they just popped up out of nowhere and they're fucking huge. It was weird. I never had anything like that before. Tommy, I got this text from you the other day saying that you want to become a new age preacher and I... I really don't know what that means. <laughs> um, have you ever heard of the uh, power of positivity? Oh, I, 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 I swim in positivity. Can't you tell? <laughs> yeah, it's just you know uh, when I was uh, oh sixteen, seventeen, maybe I got really into uh, the law of attraction. I think we talked about that on this podcast before, did we? Uh, I don't think so, but you were into magnets. It sounds like no. Not that kind of attraction. Oh. Uh, the law of attraction is like a uh, new age uh, theory that uh, any it, the energy you put out in the world is the energy you'll get back. And I think it's pretty much logical. You know, if you're a positive person and you walk around and you're positive, then, uh, you know, people will be positive and positive things will happen to you because you'll see the positive side of things more and if you're negative then uh you'll attract all the negative energy and you'll see things more negative so uh did, did you, did, for did you learn a, did you learn about this at a school assembly where some man with big muscles ripped a phone book <laughs> in half or bent a pole no 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 that's, okay that's, oh that's the power team they didn't they didn't oh, get this deep they didn't get that deep no no Law of Attraction is pretty awesome. I, I don't remember where I first heard about it, but I, I bought like a book on it and uh, learned all about it. And I got really into Buddha, Buddhism. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, 16, 17, 18. And then uh, that all led into uh, psychology and self-actualization and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I just kind of forgot about it over the years. But I've always like 
it's kind of why, if you've noticed, um, if you ever see me out and about, I'm a very jovial, very uh, fun, um, you know, I'm just uh, a happy person to be to be where I'm at, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that was uh, always like, uh, you know, I just I just kind of fell into that because I've always been a very positive person. If positive. we're talking real talk, real talk, hashtag real talk. Yeah. If you see Tommy right. strutting down that road, you'll be like, oh, my God, what a jolly soul. <laughs> well, yeah, I know a lot of times on here we 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 tend to talk about how I'm a misanthrope, but that's not really that's not really who I am. We know that. Well, you get really sad a lot, though. How are you mm. how are you going to well, reconcile very that? Introspective. Introspective. Yeah, I don't think I get sad. I just get you know. I mean, lately the world's been kind of weird, so it's uh, I haven't been able to go out and get my uh, positivity uh, refilled. You need to fill up that glass of positivity, sir. Yeah, man, I'm an empath, you know. So I think, like, oh an empath shit, these words around introspective yeah. empath. Hope yeah, these are words. Hope you're doing your word power at home, dear listener. <laughs> what the hell? People should know these words. They're oh. not big words. We're not on your level. You were well read at the age of seventeen. We're just struggling to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I don't think those are big words. I mean I don't. I, I, I honestly don't. Um, wait, wait, wait. Though, wait. When you say New Age preacher, I think you're actually going to preach a gospel of positivity. Is that what you want to do? Is that what you're going to do? I think so. Oh boy, Tommy, you're fun. <laughs> you're a fun time at the movies, is what you are. Holy Thank cow! You. Well, I think you know, like, uh, like I said, this was something that I got into, like. Uh, you remember uh, I was really into the Ataris at one point in my life. Oh, God. Who, who can forget? Yeah, and you you bawled your eyes out when you talked about it to the lead singer when you met him. That's very true. Yeah. And, well, not very true. I shouldn't say that. Uh, I was not bawling, but I, yeah, was, well, I, did, I, did, I did get quite emotional. The, yes. only, the only people that ever cry in front of Chris Rowe are 13-year-old teen girls and Tommy, so. <laughs> I was like 19 or 20 at the time, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, that guy did lead me down a path that uh, I think was very uh, positive for that time in my life. So what a righteous uh, path! Uh, did you have a diary because he had a song called "In This Diary"? Oh, I've always had a diary, Randy. What? Ever since I can remember. Still? Yes. Oh my God! Read the diary now. Find well, it. It's and a read it. Journal. Well, you said it was a diary. Girls so. call it diaries. Guys call them journals. Well, Chris Rowe called it a diary. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. I've always, always had a notebook that I just write in. I always, constantly. Oh man, it's I because gotta... you're an introspective empath. <laughs> I can't believe you think those are big words. That's that's so weird to me. Any words coming out of your mouth are big because you know. Insert fat joke here. Well, there's. I made some notes, so let me make uh, compassionate. Is that too big of a word for you? No, I know that one. Okay, you really didn't know what introspective means? Tommy, come on. I I have a bachelor's degree in English, and I at least 150 IQ points higher than you. Give me a break. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I can <laughs> I can gather a hunch that I certainly am. You really think you are smarter think- than you? Yes, absolutely. I don't think I don't. anyone will ever dispute that. I don't think you are. You don't think I'm smarter than you? Nope. Oh, my God. What makes you think you're smarter than me? Because it's just dumb. It's, it's understood. Well, why? you got to give me some reasons. Uh, Because I don't know. I know more words than you. What? Yeah. Knowledge doesn't make you smarter. Oh, it doesn't? I thought that well, was the whole... I think you're intellectual... Ability is what makes you smarter. Oh, now your ability to learn knowledge, yeah, that makes sense. But if you know, if you knew some, you know, if you knew like a group of things more than somebody else, that doesn't necessarily mean you're smarter, it just means you're more read in that subject. Okay, Tommy, you're smarter than me. I didn't say that either. I well, you, you, you did. That's smart. the whole basis I mean, of the last two minutes. You said uh, that I wasn't smarter than you. You said that. I no. You said it first. Yeah, because I am smarter than no, you. Not okay. Then I'm not. Mm-mm. 
No, I was just very uh, taken aback at uh, how I didn't know you thought that little of me. I didn't know you had that big of an ego on yourself there. Uh, you might even say I, I belittle you. That's how little I think of you. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that. That's that's a strange thing coming from a guy in New Balances. I don't have any socks on right now. <laughs> from a guy that wore a carpenter jeans and a Wolverine's leather jacket until he was 35. That's a strange assumption. From a man that's got a garlic tattooed on his boob permanently since he was 24. But that's part of my charm, Randall. <laughs> That's not a stupid thing. Okay. I knew what I was doing when I did that. Your goofy charm. That's right. That's mm-hmm. absolutely right. That's why I did it. Okay. No, um, other things on this uh, power of positivity, I think it would help me is just that uh, love over hate. You know, I've always, I think when you're, uh, every situation, every person, and everything that you're in, you have a chance to like or dislike that, right? I mean, it's the two doors thing, right? Like, what, what, which one are you going to open, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a game of Price is Right. No. Yes. Are you going to pick door number one and win the, the RV? Or are you going to pick door number two and win the, the lawn furniture set? Ugh. No, because you don't know what's behind the doors until you walk through them. That's what. Yeah, no. exactly. And the price is right. You don't know what's behind door number one or door number two. I don't like that. Oh. No, no, that's not a good example. Pop. Like, you know, so you're not winning a prize behind the doors. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's behind the, the doors? Door. Huh? What's behind the doors then? Depends on what, you know, depends on what you're doing, you know, depends on, let's say you uh, have a choice to go to. Two different universities. Sure. And so you're, you, you know, you want to figure out which one you'd rather go to. But I think the better example would be like if you be, you meet somebody mm-hmm. and there's things that immediately you could like or dislike about them, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And so I've always chosen to uh, choose things that I like about people instead of choosing things that I dislike about people. And I think that's, you know, just, and that's just a natural thing that I've always done. So I don't know, but I think a lot of people might choose uh, opposite of that, you know, so. Choose to know. hate things rather than love things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, love and hate, they're, 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 uh, they're so close, right? They're like right next to each other. They're like dangerously close. So dangerously close. It is. It oh is. My we talked about it. We talked about that in psychology at one point. You know, it's just uh, the you know love and hate. They're they're right next to each other. They're almost you know people. Some would argue that they're intertwined. Oh, is that man. too big of a word for you? Intertwined. So <laughs> we are talking about some sort of bondage situation now, is what I gather. Ew. Well, you you're talking weird. I don't know. Okay. Because. Because I said love and hate can be intertwined. Keep up with me, Randy. Oh, okay, okay. Love and marriage, love and marriage. They go together (laughs) like a horse and carriage. Is it like that? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I would say it's kind of like that. Yeah, this, I tell you, brother, you can't have one without the other. That's love and marriage. That's not really love and hate. Oh, marriage is hate. That's what I've I've gathered in my research. <laughs> You've never been married. How do you know? <laughs> I know everything about you. You Randall. don't know my life. Um, but uh, the big thing that I I realized that I have been uh, forgetting about the past oh I don't know fifteen years is uh, self actualization, and that was something that uh, I strove for. Ever since I was, I don't know, 15, 16, and I realized I got away from that, but then I I went back and kind of studied up on it, and I was like, okay, even though it wasn't present in my mind, I feel like that's um, part of my everyday struggles is trying to reach to that self-actualization without realizing that. It's kind of like I trained my mind back then to kind of gravitate that way, and even though I haven't been... Um, acknowledging all the uh, things that have led to the self-actualization, I think that I might be getting there, which is kind of exciting and refreshing. 
So that's good. That's good because uh, Maslow would argue that a lot of people don't get there. So, Oh, my God. Have you been listening to Joe Rogan a lot? You're making no sense <laughs> to me. No, actually, well, actually, I looked him up the other night, but he didn't have anybody interesting. I tried to listen to that Jordan Peterson dickhead, and I can't do it. No. Uh, let me see. I don't know if I have any uh, other things about uh, the New Age preacher. But, uh, mm. yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I, I think we both know that I'm a very, 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 very emotional person. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Which goes, back, which goes back to that empath word. Super crybaby deluxe. Google. What's that? I don't know what I said. <laughs> well, I mean, That's I feel like everyone has to have a counter. Like, you know, maybe I need to be the Joker to your Batman. Like, there's a positive... A, a negative and everything that's an atom like it makes up the whole universe so maybe that's got to be me mm. maybe i just yeah maybe i just gotta climb into my technodrome and roll over all your positive spirits <laughs> you do that enough yeah i know that's my i, I gotta keep you humbled i think what's that i gotta keep you humble Oh my God! You know, oh you know that I'm very humble. I have like no ego, which is crazy for a stand-up comedian. But that's where it is. Mm. Yeah, you I, I would say that I have. Uh, actually, this is true. I have an overinflated super ego. Mm-hmm. Is is my problem? So, always has been my problem ever since I was uh, a wee little lad. Overinflated super ego is definitely. Uh, definitely where pretty much every problem i've ever had in my life has stemmed from absolutely and you can't spell super ego without ego which is just yeah. ego with two g's and you've been waffling all around in this this cold open here i don't even know what you're trying to tell me anymore <laughs> well you should use your 150 uh, iq points there and, and and follow along with me you sounded like you took a shot of peyote and you're trying to be some sort of warrior poet of knowledge and good virtue and i don't know if i buy it or not no this is this is how um my, this is exactly how my brain functioned before i ruined it with alcohol oh okay so in a couple more weeks we'll be back to normal huh <laughs> we'll see. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. It's been I been staying off of it. So But look at you now, it. buddy. Look at you now. You're over there you're over there flourishing and I'm over here decaying. So, you know? Why would you say that? Why would I say that? Well, because you're yeah. full of positivity. Yeah, well, I mean, I always have been. Even when I was drinking all the time, I was still you know, I mean, you you said that I was a sad man, but I, I, I thought we always just played that up a little bit. I don't think I was ever really, um, really as sad as I, uh, you know, let on to be. I always, always I've always been a, a pretty positive person, okay. even even on things that I get uh, sad about. I've always been uh, more positive than uh, negative. Christ. It's just the way I was I think it's just the way I'm wired. I'm so sorry, dear listeners. You're 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 saddled with a, a real serious somber pooh bear tonight in Tommy. He just has no humor <laughs> left in him. I know. This is very uh very not humorous, but it's oh, very my. uh I think it's very important if people want to uh if people are into it. But I don't think I'm presenting it uh at a level that I could be. Okay. All right. What do you got a biographer sitting right next to you taking notes? What is all this? No. Why would I why would you think that? I I don't know. You you're really trying to paint a picture of yourself tonight. That's all I know. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just uh this is this is exciting to me because uh I haven't thought about it in a lot of years. So it's uh it's something that I um used to be obsessed with. It's something that I lived every day like thinking about and studying. And I hadn't thought about it. I mean, every once in a while, I'll think about it. You know, I'll see the book on the bookshelf, the Law of Attraction book or some other positive book that I had and I'll pick it up and thumb through it. But um, there was definitely probably three or four years of my life where, like, I thought about this stuff every single day, like, obsessively. So it's kind of uh, exciting to uh, be back there, at least for the moment. We'll see how long it lasts. That is exciting. I'm proud of you. (laughs) <laughs> i get i get that i you know i get i get obsessed about certain things and then it fades oh, away after okay. a while but this is no. one thing that 
kind of stuck around. Yeah. The law of attraction, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. And I believe in Murphy's Law. You know what that is? Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And that was that cold open. Drop that beat, D-boy. Put it in, put it in, put it in. <laughs> We're drinking so much shandy on Thursday. We so motherfucking out here, though. We never been this out here. Woo! <laughs> What you know about Leonard Skinner? I whack of the intro, the hot of the verse every time, baby. Working like a working man do Got my act together Gonna walk all over you Pressure Pushing down on me Pushing down on you Shit, let's raise the roof Woo About time It's the era of the rebels Cloud nine And the era up in the vessels Generation fearless Got a taste for weirdness Flow on fire That's the way my beard is Hard times Jump starting to grind It's all good, y'all Things fall apart sometimes Let it go Let me know when you're ready, though Don't push me Cause until the end I'm close when the time comes Ride for something Or live to be nine and then just die for nothing Speak their heart, your baby speak their mind And I'ma play their part And I'ma freak that rhyme one time for you Rhyme one time for you I'm an island, man There ain't nothing else by me, man I drink enough whiskey to float a battleship Around this bitch any motherfucking how Welcome to the Miserable Retail Slave Show. We're coming to you from the pod check outside beautiful Flint, Michigan, USA. My name is Randy and my spirit of positivity, his name is Tommy. How you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. You said Flint, Michigan. Yeah, that's right. I'm in Flint, Michigan tonight. I've got, uh, I've got the pod check roams around like a mighty caravan, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh, is it? You're going to analyze that now? Sunshine. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk off air a little oh, bit. Oh, slow down, situation. child. Slow, <laughs> slow your mind down to a, to a gentle purr, okay? Will you? <laughs> I can't. I'm too smart. Remember? Oh Jesus! Yeah, that that engine's going full blast. V6 Hemi constantly. I can't believe that you think you're that much smarter than me. You're proving it every minute you talk. Thank you very much. Well- Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I am talking right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. This is a big, dumb comedy show, except for, I don't know, the past half hour or so. But the law of attraction says we put positive thoughts into the air, and you're our positive thought, dear listener, because you're listening right now, and thank you for that. It can't just be a thought. Oh, you don't get it. I don't get you, you fucking hippie. (laughs) <laughs> I'd agree with that. Oh, you're a hippie now. Jeez, Louise, what's well, happening here? I think here? I've always been a hippie. I'm very, I'm very, always been very uh, human, humanistic. Um, Human, stop making up words. That's not a made up word. What are you talking about? Introspective, empath, humanistic man. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a hippie without the drugs. I don't know, man. It's weird. It's like I'm at I'm at a weird point in my life where I'm like, you know, like we've known that I haven't drank in well over a month now, and uh, it just it puts me back to a, a, you know, like when I was younger and obviously more serious <laughs> and more <laughs> motivated to uh, to learn about the power of my mind and the way that it could uh, guide my life. So that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at right now. Although uh, you might have a point. Like, I remember when I was like 18, 19, 20, I feel like I was a lot smarter then. Like, I was reading all these, I was reading Dostoevsky notes from the underground and all this like existentialism right. th- philosophy. Right. 
And now, right. and now I'm reading Spider-Man comics and. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's definitely a philosophy. It's definitely a philosophy. Yeah. Um, I, I think the deal is like, as you get older, you just don't want to burden your, your mind is already burdened with enough shit and you don't right. want to necessarily, sometimes you just want to watch a Marvel movie and watch dumb colors on the screen. Yeah. You don't want to think too hard. Cause I do. I do got to say that I've never wanted to watch a Marvel movie. Well, you're a, a freak show, so whatever. <laughs> um, I want to watch a horror movie. Yeah, me too. Well, yeah. yeah. Or a thriller. Have you seen The Dark and the, uh, the Dark and the Wicked yet? Not yet. I will. God damn it, Randy. I know, Tommy. I know. <laughs> do you want to do you want to start a horror podcast with me? We can. There's there's some good ones out there. Uh, my uh, my buddy Scott has uh, I think it's called the Friday Night Horror Podcast or something like that. I mean, nice. It seems like it's pretty good. The most hippie thing I've ever done. I I went to a rock store. Have you ever done this? No, no, I'm not. Yeah, I I, I guess I I should I should point out that I'm not really like a tree hugging hippie. I'm more like a, everybody should love everybody. Like okay, I'll give you an example. Last night, uh, we I found out there was a mouse in the house. Yeah. Which I'm kind of cool with, you know. I'm like, okay, why? That's a li- because I love living things. Oh, I, that's I, I, it's hard for me to even kill a bug. It's very hard. Most of the time, I'll just I'll capture the bug and I'll put them outside. Oh my and, god! Uh, and so this is this is how I am, right? And so last night, I'm uh, laying on the couch and I hear this thing squeaking, like a little squeaking toy. And then I hear something flopping around in my uh, my kitchen. Oh. And I go out there, and this mouse has got his hand and his arm caught in the trap, and he's running around in the traps, dragging behind him, and he's making all these weird meep, meep, meep noises. Yeah. Why don't we put your arm in a bear and trap I, and see how you react? Yeah, and I felt terrible, and I told I told the beloved, I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, put him outside. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> so he can come back in. So. so he can come back in. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to kill anything, man. It's just uh so that's that's kind of the uh I'm not a I'm not so much an environmentalist, more of a just just a uh I love uh yeah, humanistic kind of just a lover of uh all living organisms. I guess that would include trees. I wouldn't want to kill a tree unless it was dead already. Well, I don't like killing things either. That's why I'm not a mighty money hunter man. Uh Right. Oh God. I, I, however, no I however, the 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 thought of a mouse in the house really freaks me out. Like, um, I don't know. I would think that if I go to bed, it would be crawling all over my face and whatnot. So, <laughs> you sound you sound like one of my daughters. She gets freaked out about them too. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I just uh, I just think that uh, the chances of that happening are you know, it's there's a better chance of that not happening. So it never freaks me out. Anyways, yeah, I went to a rock store one time. That was weird. My, I had a friend that uh, she was totally into weird stuff like that, hugging trees and uh-huh. loving rocks. So we walk, uh-huh. we walk into this this rock store, and I'm like, "What world have I stepped into here?" Right. And the lady behind the counter was speaking in like barely a whisper and super calm. And oh, we got those precious gems over there. Oh yes. <laughs> we just we just got these precious rocks in. Oh, find one that find one that speaks to you, speaks to your soul. <laughs> and I'm just walking around like, holy cow! I want to get out of here because I don't get any of this. I'll never forget. You just remind me sophomore year of high school, uh, earth science. Um, we went on a field trip to the Rock and Gem Show at the IMA Sports. Fuck Arena. yes, and, I went to that. <laughs> And what what grade were you in? It would have been my sophomore year. Oh damn! I went when I was in fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely yeah a lot older. And uh, and me and my friend Gabby were walking around, and uh, we were we were kind of being assholes to the people, but not like to where they could tell. We just we just decided we were going to go on there and act really interested in everything because we weren't interested in anything. So we weren't really being mean. We were just like, let's make this fun. And so I walked up to – and I have to ask Gabby because 
I swear it's probably been 10 years since I've seen Gabby, but if I bumped into her somewhere, she would, this would probably be like the first thing that she I was going to say, I don't even know a Gabby. What's up with yo Gabba Gabba there? <laughs> she joined the uh, military right after um, high school. So that's why oh, I, good for she, her. Yeah. She didn't come back until, Oh, I ran into her a few years ago, but I don't, I don't know where she's, I don't know if she's still in Michigan or not, but, um, I said, uh, God, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a, I think it was called a fiber. That's what it was. Okay. I, I, there was this big sign that said fiber optic man-made mineral. Mm-hmm. And so I was like very jo- joyfully and obnoxiously. I was like, Hey man, <laughs> I see you got a fiber optic man-made mineral there. And the dude turned around. And he was like, no, I don't. And we're like, what? It says right there in the sign. And he like grabbed the sign and like flipped it over. Oh, wow. So I don't know. Yeah. So, and it just made us laugh for like ever. I, uh, I went to a craft show, uh, a couple of years ago. Cause last year was a lost year, right? Cause there was pandemics and whatnot. Dude. Every time I say 2020, it's like, it's like 2020 didn't, didn't exist or something. <laughs> right. Exactly. I was going to say it was For last real. year, but it wasn't, it was two years ago. Cause oh, nothing happened every, last year. Yeah. Everything is like last year. And then you say, wait, no last. Cause I don't know. Can you believe it was two months ago today that we interviewed Cliff Cash? That's insane to me. Yeah. I, I did see that when I looked at Skype and I was like, holy shit. Really? Right. It doesn't seem that long ago, right? No. This year's flying by. It was probably a month ago at this point we interviewed Will, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be close. That's, that's, that's another thing that's just crazy. It's like, like you said, you say last year and you're like, wait, no, that was like, that happened in like 2018. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's funny because when the pandemic happened, I, I thought of this man quite often, but at this craft show, which I went to with my mom and sister, because they were going to have like art and stuff, and I did buy some stuff, some cool stuff, I thought anyways, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a random pickle stand there, <laughs> and there was this man behind the pickle stand selling pickles. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, and I remember when the pandemic happened, I'm like, well, what happened to the pickle man? How is he making a living now if he's not selling his pickles at craft shows? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta worry about that craft store pickle man. He's doing all right. He he he's smart enough to uh, change up the game a little bit. He probably uh, got an online store selling pickles online. Whew, that's crazy talk. I don't know how smart <laughs> he can be. He's in the pickle biz. But anyways, yeah. he he was standing behind his counter, rolling his eyes at all the the old people and whatnot, and he had like a. a a sign with all his pickle variations. One of them was called hot damn dill. Uh And I'll never forget it. This little old lady, probably like 80 million years old, walks up and looks at the sign and goes, I want some of that hot damn dill. And she cracked up. (laughs) Give me that hot damn dill. (laughs) That's funny. That's funny. You just, it's just the way things, uh, the way people say things sometime, sometimes I'll never forget. Uh, me and uh, Richie, who uh, you know very well, um, we lost in football. So this is my junior year of high school. We lost in like the semifinals or the regional finals or something. And I was not upset. I was actually happy because I was happy the season was over. And um, and so me and Richie decided to go to the movies that night, and we went to see The Sixth Sense. And I'll never forget it. There was a guy sitting in front of us all by his lonesome, and uh, at one point during the movie, something happened, and the guy jumped, and popcorn went everywhere, and he yelled, "Jesus, chicken!" <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's kind of if I see Richie tomorrow, I bet, if I yelled, "Jesus, chicken," he would he would fall out of his chair. Jesus, chicken, indeed. You're living in this world of positivity. Let me tell you something that happened yesterday, and you'll see how I skew towards the negative side of things. So, yeah. So I go to this gas station, you know, as I want to do. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm wearing a mask because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you should want to do, though, too. Uh huh. So I'm <laughs> I'm wearing a mask by my purchases. I'm walking outside. My hands are full. I'm fumbling with the keys in my coat pocket. My yeah. my hands are full. I'm fumbling with the keys in my coat pocket. Knees weak, arms are heavy, my, there's vomit on my sweater already, my spaghetti. Right. 
And my eyes are full with the sleep of the night because it was in the early morning. And I really want to get into that vehicle of mine real quick because it's so cold out. And I need my keys because I don't slide into my vehicle through the car window like I'm a Duke Duke of Hazard man. And this this gas station is on a corner, right? Okay. Okay. I hear someone yell, hey, which is the most annoying thing that anyone could possibly yell to you, especially when your head is wibbly wobbly woozly with all the tiredness. And so I turn around and I see this man making a left-hand turn from the road beside the station to the road in front of this st- this fuel post, you see. Okay. And I look because you have to look if someone yells, "Hey, that's the rule." Mhm. I look and this man is making his turn in his dumb white truck and his big round head is hanging out the window and he's staring right at me, not on the road in front of him in mid left turn right at me. It's like, I don't need my eyes on the road. My truck white power will take care of me. And he says to me, this is what this man says to me with his big round head. He says, you don't need to wear a mask outside. (laughs) That's awesome. And he probably pumped his stupid fist and yelled, got him and did donuts on someone's front yard after that victory. Did he just, did he, so did he pull into the parking lot and say no, that to you? Fuck no. He was on the road still. Oh my god. Oh my god indeed. He was He was just looking. He was looking for that magical moment to change oh somebody's mind. Oh man. Up. He was like leaning out the entire window too, like fucking <laughs> ghost riding that bitch just so he was sure that I heard him. I wish a buzzard would have flew right into the side of his big round head. <laughs> I wear my mask in my car by myself just to hopefully annoy people like that. This is why I should carry fistfuls of salt in in my pockets just so I can both salt in the eyes of those deserving <laughs> fools who cross me. Like or sand. My yeah, my hands were full. I did I was marching towards my car. I didn't have time or a need to throw off my mask. It's so funny to me that the minor inconvenience of a mask has got some people in the world so up in arms. If he did it to me, you know he's done it before. Like he he, he probably after Oh, he lives for it. He probably lives for it. He probably called everyone he knew and posted on social media sh- <laughs> how he he really called out that coronavirus cuck that he saw yep. wearing a ma- mask outside in the gas station. Like seventh one this morning. Got him, got him. I'm an <laughs> anti-mask vigilante. Calling it <laughs> like I, I see it. Like if I'm going, let's say there's a the Dollar General by my house and the liquor store is like not even a half mile from each other. Like right. you, you should almost walk, but it doesn't quite make sense to walk when you got to drive to them anyway. So I always wear my uh, mask from one to the other. Mm-hmm. And then like there's Riverside and Market, which is a grocery store in town. And if I'm going anywhere else in town, of course, anybody that's ever been to Montrose, Michigan knows it's like super small. If I'm going anywhere else, like to the gas station, where I'll just keep my mask on. And I just oh, my God, I just I'm just smiling from ear to ear because I just imagine every person that I pass is going. Whoop, why has he got a mask on He's alone in his car? Right. Yeah. So that's that's my joy for the day. Yeah. Spreading that positive energy <laughs> to negative people, I guess. You don't need to wear a mask outside. I wish you would have <laughs> ran into a cow or something. Like what? A- Nobody's said anything to me yet. I mean, I, I'm surprised because I wear my mask like pretty loud and proud. Like I'm, <laughs> you know, what a flamboyant like mask wearer. Yeah, I like it. I think it's I, I think it's very funny that it annoys people because it's such a minor inconvenience. It's not even an inconvenience to me. And I just I just love the guys that like every chance they get, they just they just pull it down or they just, you know, I don't know. I don't get it. I feel like if you hate a mask, you also have to post memes about boys going into girls bathrooms. <laughs> You know what I mean? I think the favorite thing I've heard is when you and the beloved ran. <laughs> this still cracks. I still think about this because I thought it was such a great line. You and the beloved ran into one random bar for like 30 seconds to do a shot and then out. And you wore, you, you told me this. You wore your mask in and there was some heckler that said, oh, you look like an 80s porn star or something because you got <laughs> yeah. your big dumb beard. 
Yeah, because my beard. Yeah. That oh, funny. That, that is hilarious to me. I love yeah, that. That was really funny. Yeah, that was uh, that was my buddy Kip. Kip was my heckler that night. Hey, Tommy, you're the only one that wore your mask in this bar tonight. <laughs> like, Thanks, Kip. <laughs> oh, did you actually know him in real life? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that that takes away from it some. I thought it was some stranger. I'm like, that dude has great comedic timing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know because I don't know if he's seen me. I don't know if he's seen me with the beard. Yeah, I don't know because he, he doesn't live in Montrose anymore. So uh, he moved. I don't know if he's seen me in a couple of years. So uh, what else happened? Oh, yeah. And other news of people that I hate. Um, The the other day also, uh, the beginning of the week, I think it was Monday, I was driving around because sometimes I have to drive around for work and some um, this woman decided she needed to make a left-hand turn right in front of me, and she was trying to turn in a hurry into her own driveway, and oopsie poo poo, she missed the driveway and went right in the ditch. And, oh no! And boy, did I laugh at that! <laughs> you laughed, you she, animal! She turned in front of me. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Was she old though? No, she was younger. Yeah. I want to believe that I use my bad mind thoughts to divert her directly into that dumb ditch, but uh, God, you didn't even stop to see if she needed help. No, fuck that. Like you're in that much of a hur- like literally there was no one behind me, so you're in that much of a hurry you can't even spare twelve seconds that it would you're take. You're not an empath. You're not an empath, are you? Randy? I'm not an introspective empath, humanistic. You don't have to be all three. Well, the way you really lay it out for me, it seems like I have to be. <laughs> this other thing. I can't believe you think you're that much smarter than me. I'm I am get over that a brilliant, brilliant man, and you're a dullard. Uh, the, I don't agree. You don't agree? It doesn't matter. You're so stupid. You don't even know your lot in life. That's the problem. <laughs> what? See, you didn't even understand that sentence. You're telling me you're smarter well, no, than me. I want me. to know what you mean by that. My lot in life. What's that mean? Yeah, that's right. Your lot in life. Well, explain. You're a peasant. I'm a king. Deal with it. <laughs> Randy. I am feeling kind of Randy tonight. You're right. Oh, that's so lame. Yes, you are. See that sick burn I did? I twisted it right yeah. around. It was like I said, no, duh. <laughs> Psych. Oh shit. Can't come back from that one. The other thing that really irked my chain. What? That's weird. Jerked my chain? Nah, that's not right. I don't know. Pissed me off. I was at a gas station again, a different one. Completely unrelated to the first time. And um I walked I've never been in this gas station before, and it was like a truck stop gas station thing. It was like a uh-huh. real Fancy, schmancy, ooh, you know. Mm-hmm. And I walk like in. Showers and everything. Huh? Uh, I don't know about that. What the fuck? Oh. Gas station has showers in it. Ooh. Truck stops. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. No way. You've never been to a truck stop that has showers? Oh my god! That seems like a pornographic situation is waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, the one, uh, the one, actually, the one on uh, um, Mont Morris and I seventy five on has on a shower. Uh huh. Wow, that's crazy. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, it's a truck stop. He sure is. <laughs> that's what they call it. Mm hmm. The hottest gay bar in the land. Truck right? stop. <laughs> I'm not getting beat up by any truckers that listen to this. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's a Texas tie. Texas size ten four. Can confirm. <laughs> All you truckers, keep your big rigs, <laughs> keep your big rigs concealed. All right. There you go. So I, I was in this. Ga- I've never been to this gas station. It was really weird. I walk in, like they had like this dedicated counter to snacks and like pizza slices and hot dogs and stuff. Uh-huh. And I walk in, and the hot dog lady was just staring at me, huh. just <laughs> giving me the evil eye. I just walked, stepped in, and she immediately just gave me a stink eye. 
Why is she the hot dog lady? I don't know. They had a dedicated hot dog lady. She wasn't moving from her station either. She was just there. <laughs> Hairnet and all. Like, like fucking Sam's Club. Yeah, she was guarding those dogs with a ferocious intensity. I wasn't going to cross her. I was not going to cross her. Like, I'm going to bogart your nasty gas station meats. <laughs> all I wanted was caffeine. That's all I wanted. So I go to grab my caffeinated beverage, and I march to the the front of the store, and I had passed this hefty man with a backwards hat, because that's a cool thing to do is wear your hat backwards still. I don't know that, why that's still a fashionable thing to do when you're 45 <laughs> years old, but he was doing it, by God. That's still the best meme ever, where it's like, man, too dumb to use hat. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? No, but that's funny. Oh, it's great. It shows like this college. He looks like Zach Morris. And it's like this, he's in like a, I want to say it's like a burgundy sweatshirt or something. And uh, he's obviously at like a football or a baseball. He's in a stadium and he's standing up and his hat's backwards, but he's got his hand like, on, you know, his forehead blocking the sun. <laughs> right. And it, it says, man, too dumb to wear a hat. <laughs> man, too dumb to know how to wear a hat or something like that. Yeah. Anyways. So I, I passed this guy and he was really eyeing the chips something fierce uh-huh. so speaking of i and i get in line and the hot dog la- lady the dedicated hot dog lady was really just at me still i'm like what the fuck did i do meanwhile i look over and the dude with the backwards hat had ripped open a bag of chips and he's munching down on him right in front of her and she didn't give a fuck about that <laughs> like who does that who opens gas station potato chips and just starts eating them right there in the store like, is this his bag? He just eats random bags of chips? That's awesome. That reminds me of, uh, I used to go into the, uh, back when I was into tattoos a lot, I used to go into the uh, Borders by, uh, well, out in uh, uh, Flint Town there. Mm-hmm. And uh, if a tattoo magazine had like a, a package over it, I would just take it out of the package. And one time a worker yelled at me and said, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, that was a thing. Magazines were really cool, and they all were in bags, some of them. Yeah. It was really <laughs> enticing, like, what's behind this plastic bag? Right. I'm like, I just want to see cool tattoos without yeah. spend, spending five ninety nine. Yeah. I mean, that same magazine now will cost you ten fifty probably, because magazines Dude, are a sad. collector's item. It's sad. I like magazines better than I do smartphones. I do, too. I wish magazines would make a comeback. Yeah, but like you said, like Rolling Stone's, what, like nine ninety nine now? Yeah, it was like 10 bucks. That's insane. I lost my mind for a little bit, and I subscribed to Rolling Stone um, mm-hmm. because the subscription was like $12. And I'm like, that's <laughs> the price of one issue on the newsstand. I don't understand your your model. Right, right. Uh, and then I got... Yeah, then go I got like eight issues of Rolling Stone and I didn't read any of them because I don't <laughs> yes. have any time for anything in my life. So if it doesn't involve my phone, just leave it on the doorstep. So now I have these issues of Rolling Stone that look real cool. However, they're like, I don't know, 24 months old. So why am I going to read them at this point? Oh, it's man. Real I problem. remember I was up at Abe's uh, aunt and uncle's. I don't know, years ago, I was probably 21 and she had all these Rolling Stones from like the eighties and nineties. And she's like, you can have them. And I, I, I got like 30 of them and mm-hmm. I read like every single one. It was cool as hell. I I'm looking at it right now. I bought a years ago. I bought this like collector's thing of like all the issues of Rolling Stone from beginning up to 2000 something on, uh, a DVD ROM thing that you can plug into your computer. Uh huh. So every issue is on there. It's pretty cool. That's nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, I think we talked about this before, but the coolest Rolling Stone. And if you, and the people are, if, if anybody's, I, why are you listening right now? But I, I don't know. This has been another this dumb episode. Again. <laughs> um, but the coolest issue of Rolling Stone is the Burt Kreischer one. I think that's like my favorite thing ever. What year was that? Well, Do you know? I want to say 97, probably. Oh, was it that early? Okay. Yeah, because he would have to be in college, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and for people that don't know, like Burt Kreischer was the reason why the movie Van Wilder was written, and he was supposed to star in it. It was written about him, and something happened with him, and I think it was Universal or Miramax or whoever was putting it out, and they parted ways, but he didn't have the uh, – it was written about him, so he didn't have the rights to it, so they put it out with Ryan Reynolds. But anyway – it was all based on a Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone did a search for the uh, number one uh, uh, college party student at the number one college party school, and it ended up being Burt Kreischer at Florida State University. And this was way before he ever even did stand up. And it's a fucking hilarious uh, article. It's it's great. So that's that. <laughs> <laughs> that is that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird. You're right. I just don't have my uh I don't have my comedic flair tonight. I don't know what it is. Well, you've been lost in your introspective thoughts is what it is, if, I guess. I mean it could be. I did I didn't sleep very well last night. I know that. So that could, but I don't feel tired. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, I definitely I didn't think that I was gonna be off, but I definitely um this has proved to me that I definitely don't feel funny. Maybe it's because I don't like uh have anything to be upset about right now. Cause even though I'm a positive person, I still have feelings, you know. Oh, do you? I thought you yeah. were you were devoid of all feel, feelings at this point. <laughs> and that's the thing too about the power of positivity is that, you know, it's like the people that use it, you know, understand that, you know, if you, you know, you it's, it's easy to slip into uh, negative habits as well, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like drinking, like drinking 20 beers a day. That's not good. Okay. Tommy, all I have to say is you are the bomb. <laughs> Which is what you do on stage, bomb. That should be your nickname, what? the bomb. I have a Tommy bomb the bomb. Gonna... Thompson. Oh, I could talk about this. I could talk about this. I got I got some shows coming up. You ready? I don't care. But go ahead. I turned I turned some down though. Why? Why why would you do that? I thought you were excited to get back in the biz. Well, one I turned down because um um I uh, didn't want to do it. And another one, uh, one was uh, um, light PG-13. And my agent was like, well, my agent was like, no, 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 you can do it. You can do it. And I was like, no. And she's like, no, you know, I've seen you. I know you can do it. And it's the same rules as the one in Midland that you did. And then I had to tell her that I was really nervous about the one in Midland, but I didn't tell her that. And then when I got up to Midland, you went to that show with me. Yeah, it, and, uh, it went really well, though. Yeah, well, when I got back in the green room, I asked the guy running the show, and he's like, oh, we don't care. You can say whatever you want. Just don't say the F word a lot uh, in times in a row. And even if they like the F word, you can say the F word. So, and In so, fact, the headliner yeah. didn't give a shit at all. He did whatever he wanted to. Right. Well, that's what they told us in the green room. They were like, ah, don't worry about that. They were like, maybe just not say the F word like a lot in a row and i was like oh yeah i mean i, was, I said was, i can even say that for and they were like sure as long as the audience don't freak out but they'll be fine and they were fine i so, appreciate how in the story you're you're censoring yourself what do you mean? Oh, because the F word? <laughs> yeah, the F word. You could say the F well, word. I won't want to say the F word. Well, the F word, we, the F word, the F word, the F word, the F word. We weren't saying fuck. We were saying the F word. Okay. We were really we were really saying it as the F word. Yeah, you were um, like, uh, wait, what F word do you mean? Because uh, right, there's Frank. a few I could say. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of a really good story. This might be funny. Oh. Uh, me and Joe Bob, Abe's stepbrother, yeah. um, we went up to Central Michigan University. I was 19 years old, and I might have been doing something illegal that and it had to do with adult beverages. Oh, no. And uh, – we had this huge house party. It was amazing. It was like an animal house. And uh, <laughs> and so uh, me and Joe Baba decided we were going to go outside and take these. Uh, we took these lawn chairs that were in the garage, and we just went outside, and we were you know, hollering at people that were walking by on the sidewalk with 40s in our hands and being <laughs> idiots. Yeah. And we were hollering, and then we started hollering at some cops, and we didn't realize they were cops until they got closer. And they were like, hey, we got a complaint here of a lot of four-letter words coming out of this house. And Joe Bob, this is like, you know, what, what do you mean, like frog or flag? And I, <laughs> I don't think I ever laughed so hard in my life. And the cop was like, you guys need to go inside before we check your IDs. And I was like, see ya. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't funny. That was very funny. You no, laughed. it was hilarious. 
This has been the Miserable Retail Slave Show. It's a four-letter word for God damn it. Why did you yeah, listen to good. this? We lost our mojo. We were on yeah, a the past we, couple we, weeks haven't been that good. We, when you start off insulting me, it doesn't help. I wasn't insulting nobody. We were on a real good roll there for a while, but now we just suck real hard. However, I did hear that people enjoyed last week's for whatever reason, so I don't get that. Oh, oh shit. Well, oh, by the way, okay, here's a thing. So, um, we're going to end on this. We, uh, we really dissected Sam Hunt's body like a back road thing song. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's a dumb thing. Yeah. And, um, someone I know had a friend whose boyfriend, she, she had been seeing this guy for a while and he was like a real stupid redneck and like he lived in a trailer, but he lived in a trailer in his parents' driveway, which is even worse than living with his parents somehow. Like it's like, oh right. no, but I, I've got my own place. No, you're in, right. you're in <laughs> I'm going to my house, Mom. Yeah, it's even worse. It's like the worst thing you could possibly you're you're in a trailer in your mom and dad's driveway. What is that life? Anyways, <laughs> so um <laughs> one day uh he randomly sent her that song in a text message and said, this is what I think of when I think of you. Oh, no. And uh, who is this? Sorry, I missed the beginning of your story. Somebody I, I know's best friend. Oh, somebody that listens, obviously. Yes. And, okay. um, and, and yeah. And the, the girlfriend was not impressed by that at all. How was she not? I she should have been. <laughs> it's it's a beautiful work of poetry. <laughs> we could have went out and jammed some kid rock. Yeah, my body's like a bat. You mean I'm long and windy? What does that even mean? <laughs> this has been the Miserable Retail Slave Show. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked what you hear, and why would you have suggested this to a friend? Join our Facebook group. Facebook.com slash Miserable Retail Slave. Join our Facebook group. Follow Tommy on TikTok because he's a TikTok man. Yes, I forgot about that. I and need to get back into that. Get into I that game, that. sir. I haven't drank in like a month and a half and I forgot about TikTok. Oh, how quickly they forget. <laughs> uh, we'll be back very, very soon. Until then, stay miserable. <laughs>